Welcome, everybody. Delighted to be with you tonight to talk about the Bachelor of Information program at the University of Toronto's Faculty of Information. My name is Dan Ryan. I'm a professor at the Faculty of Information and director of the BI program. I'm joined tonight by our registrar and academic advisor, Judy Gia, and first-year student, soon-to-be second-year student, Shaina Hui. So even though we are here once again in mediated Zoom land, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves. Uh, how about we just say uh, who we are, where we're calling from, and how did we find out about tonight's event? Uh, we'll start up here at the top with Meng Zhang. Robia, Kristen, Eddie, Josh, Huynh, Henley, Mohammed, Freya, Banff, Gabriela, Iris, Hong Ting, Brooklyn, Yutong, Haksa, Yunbei, Chris, Chen, Michael D. Yangi, Lina, Lahadi, Gubelta, Naya, Ivy, Emna, Christina, Mukai, Alex C, Anna, Neda, Bilal, Aliyah, Julian, Mahul, Kedian, Michael F, Alex U, Arthur, Eileen, Robbie, Ray, Vincent, Finlay, Tayedza, and anybody we missed? Okay. Well, thanks. That's great. Um, uh, you know, I thought that was that was uh, you know some time we spent doing that, but uh, one of the things that I'm a big believer in as a as an educator um, is that one of the most valuable things about any program uh, is the people sitting next to you, not the people standing at the front of the room. Um, and so it's good to kind of just get a little bit of a sense of who you might be studying with um, were you to join our program. Um, so um, we're going uh, to have a little agenda here. We're going to we did the welcome. I'll give you an overview of the program. Uh, Judy will talk a little bit about admissions. Uh, and then China will um, give kind of a student's perspective, and then we'll have time for general Q&A, uh, either uh, stuff about admission, stuff about the intellectual side of the program, stuff about student life in the program, and so on and so forth. Um, and you should feel free to put questions into the chat at any time. Um, I can't guarantee that I will uh, see them as promptly as I should, even though I've been doing this for two years, the chat is often still a little bit out of, uh, out of sight. So overview of the program. At the Faculty of Information, our motto is we study information. But you might ask, what does that mean? We study how it is generated, how it's created, how it's exchanged, moved around the world, how it's transformed, combined with other information to produce knowledge, and how that can be deployed to shape the world that we live in. Now, some of my colleagues study information by looking at books, others at ancient artifacts, or multimedia archives, or the blockchain, or machine learning and artificial intelligence. All manner of behaviors that can be grouped under the heading human information behavior. So about five years ago, some of my colleagues began to realize that the things I was just describing the things that we teach in the Faculty of Information and the interdisciplinary way that we do it were kind of too important and too relevant to exclude undergraduates from that offering. But that put them in the position of having to ask this kind of, kind of embarrassing question, which is, can you have a fully interdisciplinary undergraduate program? Is it, is it practical? And the reason that's a hard question is because most undergraduate degrees are rooted either in disciplines or in departments. But the motivation for the program comes about because the problems that are really worth solving, the problems that it's worth um, dedicating your life to, they don't care about disciplinary boundaries. They don't care about di uh, departmental boundaries. And what my colleagues realize is that to produce the kind of graduates who can tackle what I like to call the problems worth solving, not only is a fully interdisciplinary program actually practical, it's almost essential. And so that's kind of where the Bachelor of Information program came from. So then we have to sort of say, so what's it gonna look like if you study information, but you do it as an undergraduate? What what is we study information translate to in the undergraduate context. And along with that, we have to ask two other questions, which is why does it matter? Can I convince you that it's important? And 
I need to then explain how we're going to do it. So that's where I'm headed. So why does it matter? Simple answer is that information and those information behaviors I described on the earlier slide, they're involved and implicated in the most important and complex challenges of our age. Misinformation, data-driven public policy, inequality, privacy, globalization. Like to solve problems like these, it's gonna take innovative and knowledgeable professionals, people who can really work across disciplinary and professional and cultural boundaries. People who are, and I, and I sense this in a lot of you, um, people who are willing to do the hard work that's necessary to become competent and conversant in multiple fields, ranging from critical social science and humanities at one side to computer software, computer hardware, mathematics, and so on at the other side. We need people who are as comfortable talking at a community meeting about homelessness as they are in a meeting with engineers talking about facial recognition. So how are we going to do that? What the BI does is we integrate, bring together design thinking, critical scholarship, technical training, and experiential hands-on learning. And the goal is to, to meld those so as to produce those professionals that we're pretty convinced the world is really hungry for. Right? So as you'll see when I describe the curriculum in a minute, the insight of the BI is the idea that people like you can handle going in a lot of different directions at one time, right? That intellectually, like your, your brains are well enough for them, you're smart enough that we can head off into social science and humanities land and computer hardware and software and data science, and that you can do those kind of side by side by side. And that that is actually a good thing for, the, for our brains and for the professionals that we're becoming. Now, I'm basically arguing that the world really needs BI graduates, but I think you shouldn't take my word for it because I have a guest speaker I'd like to um, allow to kind of weigh in on this topic. It's fair to say then that some of the current challenges we face are inherent to a fully connected world. But not all problems we're seeing now are an inevitable project or an inevitable byproduct of this new technology. They're also the result of very specific choices made by the companies that have come to dominate the internet generally and social media platforms in particular. Decisions that intentionally or not have made democracies more vulnerable. 20 years ago, pillars of web search were comprehensiveness, relevance, speed. But with the rise of social media and the need to better understand people's online behavior, in order to sell more advertising, companies wanted to collect more data, more companies optimized for personalization, engagement, and speed. And unfortunately, it turns out that inflammatory, polarizing content attracts and engages. So this was uh, an address that Barack Obama gave last Thursday at Stanford University, but it's, uh, it's a great speech and it, it nails it. I encourage you to, to watch the whole thing. The too long, didn't read TLDR version of this is this stuff matters. The stuff that we're talking about in the BI is incredibly important and relevant in this very moment. You may have um, in the last couple of days been following the news and you probably noticed that a lot of people are talking about Elon Musk and uh, Twitter. You've probably heard people opining one way or another about whether this is a good thing. Free speech, blah, 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 open source, blah, 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 content moderation, da, 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 billions, blah, da, private, public, da, 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 da. 
So it's, it's obviously a big thing and an important thing um, that's going on. And, and you can have an opinion on it. You know, you can stand there and say whether you're for it or against it. But, but what do you really need to participate effectively and what I'm going to call non-naively in that conversation? What is content management? What is a recommender system? Uh, what does it mean to optimize for engagement? Isn't engagement good? We've been trying to engage you in your classes online for the past two years. Right? Could Twitter work in some other way? How, in fact, do the technologies here work? Um, how are recommender systems trained? Right? What is reinforcement learning? Could they be trained to optimize something different? What is... AI and recommender system and big tech regulation, what does it really look like, right? How does regulatory policy happen? How do communities work? How does the human mind work? Is this, this thing that's going on right now, this week, is this brand new or have we been here before? What do technology and human culture owe to one another? So, this, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the kinds of things that are implicated in our concern over the sale of Twitter to Elon Musk. And I don't know about you, but some of these things are very opaque, right? I, I might have heard the word before, but I, I couldn't stand up and give a speech about it. And yet, to be a participant in this stuff that really matters, this is the kind of stuff that I've got to spend some time learning about, right? And it ran, runs the range from um, how do recommender systems work um, and what is reinforcement learning, um, but also uh, where does uh, regulatory policy come from? Uh, can I just sort of stand up and say, we ought to regulate this, right? Or do I have to sort of understand something about the regulatory process and where that, how that happens. So question then becomes, how do you figure all this stuff out? How do you train yourself up for this stuff, right? How, how's the BI, since that's what I'm advertising tonight, how does the BI take you from here to there, where the there is being able to participate in that conversation in an effective and non-naive way? Well, one answer to that is um, we're going we're gonna to put together, a, or we have put together, a team of really excellent teachers. So these are folks who've taught in the program this year. Um, they're awesome. Uh, they're great instructors, and they really end up being your instructors because the class size is like 25 students, right? The maximum we're going to have in our classes is 50. Um, and so you spend 12 weeks, a couple hours a week with somebody, and there's only 25 people there. Um, even if you're online, you get to know folks in a way that just simply doesn't happen uh, in the average uni sized university class. So that's one thing. We have great teachers. Second, um, you're going to read some books. One of the things that the teachers do is they're going to curate materials for you introducing you to the things you ought to read and reading them with you and your classmates. And so these are just some examples of books that might cross our radar screen in our courses. Um, having somebody uh, help you figure out what you should read first, what you should read next, and how to talk about it is one of the greatest gifts out there. Um, and you've probably all experienced this in classes you've already taken. Um, the third thing I bring you is your fellow students. Um, I'm comfortable assuring you that we are curating a set of marvelous classmates for you, folks with whom and from whom you will learn a lot in two years. And for years after you graduate from our program, these are the folks who are going to be a core element of your professional and social network. And they're pretty awesome. Now, all of that um, happens um, around the skeletal work, this, the structure of the curriculum. 
And so I want to describe a little bit about how we do, what the curriculum looks like. Um, the curriculum consists of three parts, uh, lecture courses, studio courses, and practical or hands-on learning. Um, the equation is the BI is equal to 10 lecture courses plus six studio courses plus one practicum plus four electives. And you put that all together. And so the lecture courses draw on sociology and political science, anthropology, cultural studies, statistics, data science, computer science, economics, policy, museum studies, archives. This is a listing in yellow here of, of the lecture courses and in blue of the studio courses. The studio courses cover design thinking uh, and design technique, user interface, user experience design. Um, you might hear those referred to as UI slash UX or just UI UX, uh, data visualization uh, and coding. You can check the syllabi out um, at the, at the uh, address down here. Stick that in the in the chat. So most of the courses, uh, the syllabi are going to be available there. You'll have to you have to do a little bit of searching for them. But that's a good thing because when you look over the courses there, you'll also see master's degree courses, which will also whet your appetite. It's a good. Thing. Oh, and if you're wondering what a studio class looks like, um, this is one from last fall when we were still masked. Uh, this is the data visualization studio. So here's how we arrange the classes over the course of the two years. So uh, in year one, we have three lecture courses and two studios in the fall, three lectures and one studio in the winter. Uh, in the summer, we have a single lecture course and a practicum. This lecture course in the summer is typically online, uh, even if COVID doesn't exist. Um, because people are doing their practica in various places. So you could, you could be off in Seattle doing a practicum, or you could be in Los Angeles, you could be in Shanghai. Um, and so this course, which takes place during the second half of the summer, um, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be an online course. And then in the second year, in the fall, we have uh, two lectures and a studio, uh, and then you have two electives. And in the winter, you have uh, a lecture, uh, two studios, and two electives. The electives are courses that you can take um, from pretty much anywhere in the university. Finishing in the second, uh, in the second uh, winter term, um, we have a capstone studio course. The capstone is a chance for you to kind of bring together everything you've learned in the program in a project that could be a group project or an individual project um, that, uh, that is of your choosing. So you kind of move from projects uh, mandated or described or given to you by your professor to one that you uh, at some level cook up yourself. Now, a lot of our students uh, end up taking a full year capstone. So they use up one of their electives um, and uh, in the fall. And these are capstones that are uh, interdisciplinary team projects. There are some that are run by the School of Cities at U of T, others by the engineering school. Um, and these are typically client-based uh, teams of five folks where there's a real world client who has posed a problem. And then there's a faculty advisor and so on. I worked a bit with a team this year that um, produced some software for doing sheep Yes, you heard me right. Sheep, the animal, uh, facial recognition. So they're developing uh, techniques for being able to identify sheep uniquely. Turns out it's a very important problem in terms of agricultural safety um, and the, you know healthy food system and so on. Here's a list of some of the things that people have taken as electives. Um, one of the options for electives is to take courses at the Faculty of Information from the Masters of Information program. So we have kind of uh, opportunity to take MI courses, uh, master's level courses uh, while you're an undergraduate. Um, not every course is available for that because some of them have prerequisites that we don't have, um, but you can see there's a whole bunch of ones on here. All of the ones that are INF with four numbers are uh, graduate courses at the Faculty of Information. 
Let's hear we're from learning some how students. to build a computer. It's one of my favorite courses because we're working with our genios. Design courses, we have courses on cultural imagination. We're learning about design through a human computer interaction and user experience lens. We're able to actually create our own prototypes and design systems with those lenses in mind. Information policies and laws and Python coding course, information visualization. We're kind of like learning about the design process and like a big concept that we're talking about is adapting the design to people instead of having people to adapt to the design. We're at least exposed to a diverse range of technical tools and uh, logic and thought processes. Uh, but at the same time, we also learn about theory and, you know, critical approaches to design, uh, critical approaches uh, about information and information sciences. The professors have kept the courses open-ended, so you can go out there and explore whatever you want, which I really enjoy. So there's more to education than just the curriculum. Um, here are some of the resources and features uh, that make the BI work um, in addition to classes. Um, the classes are small. Um, and like I say, this year we had 25 students in the class. Um, next year we anticipate no more than 50. And we'll probably, even if we have 50 total, um, some of the studios will be split into smaller components. Um, we have access to all the facilities at the Faculty of Information, including maker spaces, design studios, labs. Um, there's a very strong student services team that works on advising. Uh, they do um, writing help. So there's a writing center and writing tutors um, and tech support. Um, and as a part of this, there's a dedicated career services team that supports both the finding of internships uh, and the practicum uh, and um, after graduation placement. So, um, so there's a real focus on on, on making sure that that career thing happens. Uh, of course, you're also studying at Canada's number one university and the Faculty of Information is, um, is pretty much the fastest growing faculty at U of T. We've added several new faculty members each year for the last few years and that's a, a process that looks likely to continue. Finally, even though our program is young and so we don't have uh, uh, a whole lot of uh, graduates out there from the BI. Uh, when you graduate, you join an alum body uh, from the iSchool um, that currently numbers on the order of 7,000 students. And, and they're all over the world in uh, every industry and kind of government role you can imagine. Now, the career thing is particularly important to us. Um, it's a bachelor's degree. Um, but we, it's a second entry bachelor. It's one that's meant to be a professional bachelor's. And the curriculum and the support services are really built around the idea that it is professional. We're very firm believers uh, in the idea that the best learning happens when you're doing. And that the interplay of the doing that you can have in the studio classes or in an internship um, when that interacts with the thinking about big critical ideas that we talk about in the lecture courses, um, that's the alchemy, that's the, that's the secret sauce that allows us to produce the kind of new flexible-minded, interdisciplinary-minded thinker um, that's gonna become, we believe, uh, increasingly sought after um, during the time that you're out there in the world of work. Um, here are some of the practicum placements that um, uh, we've had in the last year or so. Um, you'll notice that on this list, there's some private industry. Uh, there's some non-governmental organizations. There are government agencies, both at the national, uh, at the federal level, at the provincial level, as well as, uh, as the city of Toronto. Um, and then there are some placements with U of T organizations, or uh, one of the most popular one really is uh, placement with U of T professors uh, in a research role. So, so you spend your summer as a research assistant. We're a new program, as I mentioned. So our first grads are just a year or so out, and we don't have a long answer to the question, 
what kind of careers do people have after the BI? Um, but here are some of the directions that people are headed in. Um, several of these are in UI, UX. Um, others are analyst roles, uh, maybe in business or privacy. Um, some of our students aspire to be web developers or publishers. Um, and then uh, a, a number of folks um, pick up on the library science side of the iSchool, and they're attracted toward records and archives and, uh, and specifically digital uh, record management. Um, and then there's data science and its variants um, that's quite common. Um, at this point, about 20% of each cohort have opted to move into the Masters of Information uh, after the BI. Um, some of them, uh, most of them, I think, are doing UI, UX there, uh, although a few are in human-centered data science. Um, before I sign off, let's, um, let's hear from some current students. I always that. wanted to be a UX designer, and in this program, they will teach me the basic skills that I will need in my career path. I'm hoping to get into something with data science or artificial intelligence and anything within technology. So my career goal would be becoming a user experience designer. Also really interested in exploring more in privacy studies as well. Uh, my career goals include being a UX designer, hopefully somewhere in product design. And I think my studio-based courses on design really um, help me prepare for that. I really also like to design and design and maybe create technology that helps me do better in my everyday life. I find it really difficult to organize my time, my information. So I'd also like to find a way to create that, those solutions for myself and the people around me. I hope to get involved in like policy and or like communications because I'm interested in kind of like looking at the systemic way things are done, how things can sort of be improved and like impacts can be made. Okay, um, I'm gonna um, shut up for a few minutes and uh, pass the talking stick over to Judy to tell you a little bit about how the Bachelor of Information uh, application process works. Are you there, Judy? Thank you, Dan. Can everyone hear me? Dan, can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Uh, so yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about the BI admissions process. So as Dan mentioned, the BI is a second entry professional undergraduate degree. This means that you can enroll after two years of university Coming from coursework <laughs> uh, or after you have completed a bachelor's degree in another field. This also means we don't transfer credits in. We simply require that you have completed 10 FCEs, which is a U of T terminology and stands for full course equivalent, where one FCE is a uh, full-time course that runs over a complete academic year. So half FCE is essentially a half course that runs between uh, one, one semester between September to December. So the BI program requires 10 FCEs or 20 semester length courses. At least four of these need to be at the 200 level or above. Applicants also need to have a 70% GPA in the last five FCEs. So in addition, because our curriculum is highly inter and multidisciplinary, and because we hit the ground running, so to speak, expecting the skills and experiences of an entering third year university student, we wanna see that you have taken at least one course in each of the three areas on the screen. Formal systems under this heading are science and math courses, logic, statistics, coding, you need to know that you enjoy this kind of work and we need to know that you're ready to grapple with it. Socio-cultural systems. Here we look at courses in human society and we define the category broadly. Topics such as sociology, anthropology, political science, media, or cultural studies. And lastly, creative practice, my favorite, design. Understood broadly is an important dimension of our curriculum. And we'd like to see that you've spent a little time in the pastures of design, art, performance, creative writing, film, etc. We interpret this area quite broadly. So sometimes we find with applications, students have not necessarily taken a course in creative practice. However, they're able to demonstrate 
creative practice through either a personal statement or some kind of extracurricular activity or something that they participate in that's performance related. Um, so yeah, this requirement is quite broad. Uh, and the purpose of these requirements, again, is to ensure that this is the right program for you. Okay, so next, let's talk about how to apply. Okay, so our application process is simple. First, you need to establish an application through the OUAC portal. Then we need two or three supporting documents. One is your transcript, which can be unofficial, so we can verify eligibility. Second is a personal statement about why the program is right for you. More on this in a minute. Lastly, if applicable, we need proof of your English proficiency. All documents should be sent as an email attachment to this address here on the screen, admissions.ischool at utoronto.ca. Okay, so next is supporting documents. All right, so about the personal statement, let me elaborate. We want to hear how your previous experience, academic, work, personal, and your future plans makes you and the BI program a good fit. We look to see that you have a sense of what the program is about and what aspects of it are particularly attractive to you. We look to see what kinds of questions and issues you want to explore while pursuing the BI and with the BI after you graduate. What impact are you hoping to make in the world and how does the BI help you achieve it? So there's no need to write a book. We prefer statements in the 400 to 500 word range. But, however, the personal statement does not need to be a written essay. Use whatever medium allows you best to, just, sorry, use whatever medium allows you to best express yourself. Tell us who you are and communicate why BI is the right program for you and vice versa. It can be a two minute video, a website, a portfolio, or well, anything, just surprise us. The bottom line is your personal statement should successfully introduce you to us and help us evaluate the fit between you and the BI. So next is transcript explanation. So this is an optional item that you can include. The official record of any of our lives does not always give us a complete sense of the story. And this is certainly true of our academic transcripts where our school achievement is boiled down to a list of courses and a computated GPA. We know that still happens in life and most of us have a semester or a year where the official record doesn't capture us in the best light without a little bit of explanation. So if you have something in your transcript that doesn't show you in the best light, no problem, just include an explanation and we'll take that into consideration when we review your file. All right, so about deadlines, you might be wondering when you can apply. In fact, you can apply tonight, right after the session. Applications are open now until the end of April on the OUAC portal with an extra two weeks to get the supporting documents in. So please don't wait and please keep in mind that we evaluate on a rolling basis and we send out admissions offers promptly and we'll continue to do that until the class is full. And most recently, uh, we've decided to extend our application deadline. So those of you that are worried about meeting this April 30th deadline, do not worry. If you look on our website, you'll notice that our deadline has been extended to June 30th. So you do have some time to submit an application and supporting documents. But as I mentioned, uh, the sooner you get your application in, the sooner we can evaluate it and hopefully admit you um, as our spaces are filling up. Uh, so the purpose of these requirements, again, is to ensure that this is the right program for you. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk about, let's see, what are we gonna talk about next? The, 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 the one thing nobody wants to talk about. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, tuition fees, yes. Uh, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but we do need to cover tuition fees because it is important. So just to give you some sense of numbers. Um, so the numbers you see on the screen have changed. I actually just double checked 
on our website mm-hmm. and tuition fees, uh, domestic tuition fees for this year, which is 2021-2022 year, is, uh, let's see here, about $13,000. Um, and then for international students, it's about 62500 Oh, my gosh. So, again, I apologize. <laughs> um, but, yeah, these are approximate numbers. And uh, tuition does go up. And just, I don't know if it was mentioned earlier, but um, the BI program is five uh, semesters. So there is the summer semester. Um, okay, so <laughs> the good the good news is we do have awards and financial aid. So to help offset tuition fees, financial aid and admissions awards are available through the Faculty of Information and the University of Toronto. So the BI program offers admission awards of up to $5,000. All applicants are eligible and considered, so you do not need to fill out a separate application. The university also has an extensive uh, work study program You can apply starting in August, and uh, you will soon meet our current work-study student, Shaina, uh, and she can certainly elaborate on the program and uh, how she's liking the program and how it's benefiting her. Uh, And of course, government loans such as OSAP and personal bank loans are also available. Okay, so that's all from me about admissions. And yes, I would now like to introduce everyone to Shaina. All right, can you hear me? Loud and clear. (laughs) Um, Hi, I'm Shaina. I am a first year student here at the Bachelor of Information. Um, A little bit of background for me. I am actually a graduate from the University of Toronto. So I finished a previous degree in history and anthropology in 2020. Um, I took a year off and then applied and came back to school here at the program. Um, I did choose the BI program for various reasons, uh, mainly because I kind of had some interest in the field of UX because it kind of really bridged what I worked on in anthropology in my first degree, but uh, in more of a kind of um, world of technology, which I feel is very extremely relevant today. So kind of taking those theories and applying it to this new practical environment um, is kind of a very exciting uh, new path for me. And I've kind of really gotten the foundational skills and concepts that I would require to uh, work in industry, which is very cool. Um, Another big selling point for me from the program was also the practicum. So uh, after your first year in the summer, there is a practicum portion. So that's kind of like an internship, which is um, a really big factor for me because I think that's a really great opportunity to get some real work experience in the field that you're maybe interested in for a short time before fully committing to a full-time role um, for the rest of your life or after graduation, which is really nice. And then the other reason would be just the connections and quality of education offered at the school Um, made it a super easy choice for me to return just because I have been around and got to experience the quality of education from professors and the resources from like the career center and the writing center as well. Um, Next slide. Next slide, please. One more slide. Thank you. Um, So from a student experience and standpoint, I've just finished my first year. So I can speak a little bit about kind of the courses that I got to do in this uh, first year. Um, we had some studio classes, so that's the UX design and building computers, and that's been a really big shift from kind of the learning environment that I'm used to in my previous degree. So, um, it is kind of intimidating to come from somewhere that maybe you're just used to taking lectures, um, sitting there taking notes, but uh, having that interactive kind of studio feel is uh, really exciting. And the professors definitely provide you with kind of the skills that would you need to uh, successfully complete the courses. Also, a lot of your classmates are going through the same thing with you. So I know Dan mentioned that the course, the class sizes are very small. So it's a cohort. So basically you take all your classes with um, the same group of people. So you're always going through the same thing. So you get a lot of help and support from each other because we're going through the same test, assignments, group projects, uh, which is really good. So there's a lot of support. Um, For more of the lecture-based classes as well, we learned a bit about archives and museums from a cultural perspective. 
um, kind of understanding different information practices, as well as kind of um, learning a bit about the influence of law, economics, and culture on the world of technology, which is kind of a really um, kind of supplements the practical aspect of the program as well, which is really great if you're communicating with kind of other coworkers or people in industry. That's really nice to know. Um, programs and softwares that we used here in the first year, we used Arduino kits for the How to Build a Computer course. We worked with our studios for the statistic course. We did some intro to JavaScript and HTML. Um, for design aspect, we used Balsamic, Figma, and Mural. Um, for all of these, I had zero experience um, before this year and um, successfully kind of survived it all. Um, so if you have no experience in any of these softwares, there's no need to feel intimidated or kind of um, worried about it. it. They definitely take you um, to the very, very basics. Um, they take it as if you've never touched it or seen it before. And you end the course with kind of a foundation that you can kind of build on in the next year or in the summertime. Um, I think that's it for me. If there's any questions. Oh, the practicum, sorry, that's, <laughs> um, yeah. So for this one, uh, applications, um, there's a lot of resources for you to kind of apply. So we have a course, which is INF 401, the practicum prep, it's a full year course in your first year. And basically that runs along kind of your application process. So that's kind of working on building your resume, building cover letters, learning how to navigate interviews, um, talking about yourself, um, building your story and kind of your brand as you kind of navigate this new professional experience. So that one's been really um, helpful. There's also the Career Center where they, you can uh, talk to the advisors with kind of having mock interviews, um, which I've done, which is super helpful to kind of get that feedback on how to navigate questions that are you receive from interviewers and whatnot. And the other great resource that you get is your professors. Many of them have worked in industry or know the industry really well over the years. So they're definitely, if there's a course that you're super interested in or have kind of questions about it, um, definitely talking to them, getting their perspective is super helpful as well uh, when you're kind of going through that application process. And I think that now I'm done. Super. We can have questions for Shaina and questions more generally. I'm gonna kill the share so that we can see people's faces. <laughs> 